in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, oh God, Amen. Today is the Wednesday of the Holy Pascha week, and we have a lot of amazing things in the events of today. The Lord Jesus Christ was resting exactly like they keep the lamb for slaughter at the Passover, keep it resting, and then before they take any action about him. So he spent his day in the Bethania in a kind of seclusion, and around him there were lots of hearts that are contrasting to one another. The first heart is the heart of a woman who appreciated and loved him so much to the extent that she gave the most and most precious thing that she has, a bottle of perfume. And she broke it and she put it in his head and his feet. According to the tradition, the Jewish tradition, when a girl reached the age of sweet 16, as we have her nowadays, is sealed and she'll, she'll keep it very carefully until the day of his, her wedding and on that day she breaks it and pours on her her body so that she smells good to her husband so this thing was very special to her his divine love which is very unconditional and sacrificial she exchanged love with him the same way and she gave the best thing that she has to give him. So the fragrance, the sweet fragrance of this perfume filled the whole house. And it remained the same thing throughout the ages and ages until today and forever. The sweet aroma of the Lord Jesus Christ and his love, which is unconditional. So this is an example of the heart that's dedicated to God. She loved her, she loved him with all her heart, without hypocrisy, without anything of that sort. It's not materialistic, it's very pure heart. So that kind of heart is very important. There is another example of a heart that loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Job, and we read his book this morning, and it's about a person who loved God from the bottom of his heart, although he was the greatest man in the East. But he loved the Lord Jesus, the Lord God, to the greatest extent. He kept on loving him for 30 years of suffering, of diseases and sickness and humiliation, even from his wife. But she said, I don't need him because he's not clean and he should go out of my house. It's very cruel. But he accepted that. And he never said any bad word. He never grumbled. But he was thanking God for everything to the extent that he said, I came out of my mother's womb naked, and I'm going to earth back naked. The Lord has given to me. He thought that he has given him everything, all this richness and his 10 children. And he said, the Lord gave them to me, and the Lord has taken them away. Let the name of God be glorified. With his best friends, they came to console him, give him comfort. They put more pressure on him, and they were very cruel to him. But still, he did not say anything, whether he, anything against God who loved him. So he kept loving him, despite the fact that he has been 30 years suffering from all tribulations and tests of his faith. So that was another example of the real love. So there is love that came instantly from that woman, that's her instant and immediate reaction. And she loved him and expressed what the best thing that she has. And that man was loving him for 30 whole years despite the suffering that he has. So this is a kind of man. So she, made, she did it quickly and he did it throughout 30 years, not of luxury and, ple and pleasure in life, but in suffering without any single word that he complained about was going on to him. He knew that man. Even the best friends despised him and put him in trouble. Now, there are two kinds of love now. One is made haste and loved 
with all her heart and when even before instead of the suffering in, in spite of the suffering he kept on loving him without any change in his attitude towards God so let's ask ourselves this question today do we love the Lord Jesus Christ do you love him do you love him what are you going to sacrifice for the Lord? What are you going to give the best thing that you have in your life to him? What's the best thing that you have? Hmm? The self, the ego. Are you going to sacrifice it for him? We sacrifice it under our feet so that the Lord lives in our life. So we live in Christ, then we're going, you can do everything that he does for the humanity around us. Are we ready to do that? To step on the ego and stop talking about myself and I, I want, I need, I was, and so on. So it's very important to remember that today. I'm loving with God, I love to love him with all my heart. I'm ready to sacrifice my ego for his sake so that he will work in my life. That's how St. Paul says, I am crucified with God with Jesus. When a person is crucified, what happens to him? Huh? When someone is crucified, what happens to the person who is crucified on the cross? He dies. So I put my ego there on the cross so that it dies. And St. Paul says that I'm, I'm crucified with God, it means I'm dead with God, on the cross, but I live not me, but the Lord lives in me. So if you want love to work in your life, you need to do the same thing so that he will work in your life. And then the one who is going to see the people around you is Jesus himself. We can see the people around us with his eyes, and therefore we cannot judge people around us and point fingers at them. This is the Lord Jesus Christ who is meek, and kind to everybody, even the worst sinners. He treated them with gentleness and kindness because he is meek and lowly in heart. So are we ready to do that? I think we have to think about it very dearly and long. Again, let's try to imitate the second example, which is Job. Are we ready to accept the sufferings in the world for the sake of Christ and don't grumble about them? Are we going to have patience so that we can tolerate everything so at the end of it we will be justified by the Lord Jesus Christ and will give us the reward that's a portion in the kingdom of heaven with him forever and ever. This is very essential to remember that. Either way, we have to love God with all our hearts, not just say, I love God, and you don't take action to show that you love him, whether in the long run or immediately on the spot. So these two examples, let's make a decision today. Am I going to make haste and love him without changing mind? And whether I'm going to love him for all these years, the end of my life, so that I'll be with him in, in the end of life. So we have to make up our minds today. The third example, which is contrasting with all these things, the example of a man who pretended to love him, a man who was chosen by him to be among the disciples who were supposed to preach the gospel, the, the gospel to the whole world, but he loved more money than anything else. For 30 piastres, 30 pieces of silver, he, is, he sold him, he betrayed him. So that's not this love of money, not love of God. How much is that worth today? 30 pieces of silver. It's about less than a, a quarter of a dollar today. And if you compare it to what's the, the price of a cubic centimeter of sand, how much is it? We have engineers here, construction engineers. The truckload of, of sand is sold at about 15 dollars a day per, per load. So the portion of one centimeter of sand is how much? 
nothing, less than two cents. So he sold his master for two cents. But if this hand is put in fire and under pressure, it turns to what? To glass. How much is one centimeter, cubic centimeter of glass? It's about five dollars. When you get a cup or whatever you have. And if it puts under more pressure, it will be more precious. What will come in? Crystals. How much is crystal? We have about $30 per cubic uh, centimeter. It's put under more pressure and more fire. It becomes huh? diamond. How much is a one centimeter of diamond today? How many thousands of dollars? I don't know, I didn't go to the market for that. But this is the value that he has for his master, just a penny. But the Lord who was suffering throughout the agony that he had and the suffering and the pain and tribulations and the emotional feeling with the people who rejected him. Throughout all these things, he is compressed and he is put under fire and he became very precious for us. So the question you ask yourself today, what's the value of Christ in my life? Is it like a diamond or like a one centimeter of sand? So we have to make up our, our minds today. We have to make it and be sincere about that, not to be a hypocrite and say, I love God and I don't do anything for him. Uh, so what can we do now? We have to make up our minds. To get rid of that kind of hypocrisy and Forget about the love of money and love of things pertaining to the world. If we would leave the, the Lord Jesus Christ, love him and would like to be with him forever in the kingdom of heaven. Now, how can we sacrifice, or did, do this sacrifice of love in our daily life today? It's full of filth, full of problems, full of suffering, and full of bad things in life. So what can we do? What is the, the thing that I'm going to pour in his feet? What's the good thing that we have to do every day? One of the things is to have mercy on people around us, people under me, I should be merciful to them. The other thing is to visit the sick people, not as a, a social gathering and just again to share with him things, but to visit the, the sick person and serve him or her. That's the real love. I sacrifice my comfort for the sake of the person who needs help. The other thing is to forgive the other people about the things that are against us. The people who put me in trouble, I forgive them. Can I do that? So long as I have my ego very high, I cannot do it. But I need to humble myself like my Lord Jesus Christ who humbled himself and he was humiliated, but he still loved the people, even the people who hurt him. He gave us an example, and we should do the same thing. So today is a crucial time to make up our minds whether we love Jesus Christ sincerely, what we're going to sacrifice for him, what are going to give to the humanity to show that you love God, you love them also. We ask the Lord tonight that will give us the insight and give us the decision to make up our minds to be either with the Lord Jesus Christ, share with him his suffering, and then have the glory of his life in the eternal life, or to go to the world, and we know where we're going to. We ask the Lord to give us wisdom and kindness, and ask him to give us real meditation in the, so the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and think of them, think how they are purifies, purifying us and heal us from the, the, the wounds of the world that's around us. For him is your glory forever and ever. Amen.